Welcome to Astronomy Daily, where we bring you the latest and most exciting updates from the cosmos. I'm your host, Anna, and I'm thrilled to be your guide on this journey through space. In today's episode, we're diving deep into the celestial wonders and groundbreaking achievements that keep our eyes fixed on the stars. We'll start off with the highly anticipated annular solar eclipse set to occur on October 2nd, 2024, and explore the best spots to catch a glimpse of this stunning event. Next, we'll take a closer look at Boeing Starliner Calypso's recent undocking from the International Space Station and discuss the upcoming crew changes. We'll also unravel the mystery behind China's space plane, which has just returned from an impressive 268-day mission. But that's not all. We'll delve into humanity's enduring fascination with aliens, tracing their impact on our culture and imagination from ancient times to the present. Finally, we'll talk about NASA's upcoming Roman Space Telescope and how it promises to revolutionize our understanding of galactic formation and dark matter. So sit back, relax, and let's embark on this celestial voyage together on Astronomy Daily. One of the most exciting upcoming astronomical events is the annular solar eclipse on October 2nd, 2024. This event promises to be a spectacular sight for those fortunate enough to be in the right place at the right time. Now, for those who might be unfamiliar, an annular eclipse occurs when the moon is too far from the Earth to completely cover the sun. This results in a breathtaking ring of fire effect, where the edges of the sun remain visible as a luminous ring around the moon's silhouette. Think of it as a celestial penny on top of a nickel. The last time we experienced such an eclipse was on October 14th, 2023, when it graced the skies over parts of the western and southern United States, the Yucatan Peninsula, Central America, and parts of South America. Millions were thrilled by the sight of the blazing ring of sunlight. However, if you thought last year's event was stunning, this year's eclipse presents an entirely different challenge and opportunity. Why, you ask? Well, the path of this annular eclipse will mostly traverse open ocean waters, making landfall in only a few select locations. Approximately 95% of the eclipse's path will be over the vast expanses of the Pacific. This will make accessing the prime viewing spots more challenging compared to last year's easily accessible locations. The eclipse will begin over a remote area in the central Pacific, roughly 1,000 miles southwest of Honolulu. From there, it will move eastward and southeastward across the South Pacific. The path skirts just north of Kiribati, then continues northeast of French Polynesia and the Pitcairn Islands. The point of greatest eclipse, where the annular phase will last an impressive 7 minutes and 24 seconds, occurs over the open ocean, with the eclipse path approximately 165 miles wide. Yet there's a silver lining for eclipse enthusiasts. One of the most fascinating and remote locations to witness this event is the legendary Easter Island, also known as Rapa Nui. This UNESCO World Heritage Site, famous for its enigmatic Moai statues carved from volcanic rock, lies almost directly in the path of the eclipse. If the weather permits, both the island's residents and visiting tourists will be treated to a remarkable display. Easter Island isn't just an archaeological wonder. It offers a unique vantage point for the eclipse. As the moon begins its journey across the sun's disk at 11.23 a.m. local time, by 1.04 p.m., an off-centered solar ring will emerge, lasting for about six minutes and five seconds. Following the peak, the moon will continue to move away, concluding its celestial dance at 2.52 p.m. While an annular eclipse is undoubtedly an extraordinary sight, it's crucial to remember that it differs significantly from a total eclipse. During a total eclipse, the sky darkens dramatically, resembling twilight, and the sun's corona becomes visible, offering a truly awe-inspiring view. However, during an annular eclipse, the sky only dims slightly, and the bright ring of sunlight still makes direct viewing dangerous to the naked eye. Therefore, proper eye protection is essential throughout the event. The eclipse will also be partially visible at sunrise from the Hawaiian Islands and in the afternoon across southern South America. In Honolulu, for instance, the eclipse will reach its maximum phase at 6.45 a.m. local time, with 58.6% of the sun's disk covered by the moon. Looking ahead, there's more celestial excitement on the horizon. On March 29, 2025, a partial solar eclipse will be visible across much of Europe, Northwest Africa, Greenland, Iceland, and parts of Atlantic Canada and New England. And mark your calendars for August 12, 2026, when the next total eclipse will sweep through eastern Greenland, western Iceland, and northern Spain. For those of you planning to view the eclipse this October, whether from mainland South America or the mystical Easter Island, 
Be sure to secure your protective eyewear and prepare for one of nature's most mesmerizing displays. Now let's take a look at today's major event. The Boeing Starliner Calypso has returned to Earth after its highly anticipated undocking from the International Space Station. This event marks a significant milestone in modern space exploration. Originally launched to the ISS on June 5th with two veteran astronauts, Butch Wilmore and Suni Williams, Calypso is now set to complete its mission back on Earth, while Wilmore and Williams remain on the ISS for an additional six months. The autonomous undocking went smoothly at 6.04 p.m. EDT on September 6th, right on schedule. Landing was slated for later that evening at White Sands in New Mexico, a familiar site for the Starliner's previous uncrewed landings. White Sands Missile Range, known for its remarkable gypsum sand dunes, serves as one of the primary landing spots for the Starliner, alongside other options like Dugway Proving Ground in Utah and Wilcox Plain in Arizona. There's even a contingency site at Edwards Air Force Base in California. For this mission, the White Sands Space Harbor was the designated landing site, a location historical for hosting the landing of Space Shuttle Columbia in 1982. Starliner Calypso has landed here before, notably following the orbital flight test mission in December 2019 and the second uncrewed Off-2 mission in May 2022. However, the landscape of the mission this time was different in a major way. It was uncrewed during this return. This landmark event has set the stage for what lies ahead in the tapestry of space missions. Just a week before undocking, on August 29th, NASA completed part two of its readiness review, giving the green light for Calypso's uncrewed undocking from the ISS. Seven data loads were updated, and the CFT software had shown excellent results during testing. Final checks wrapped up on September 5th with a readiness poll, and by 1.30 p.m. EDT, the hatch was closed by Wilmore and Williams. Weather conditions were favorable, with winds clocked at 7 to 10 knots, a crucial element for ensuring a safe landing. If the weather had not cooperated, backup dates were lined up for the undocking on a four-day cadence through September. The undocking started by releasing Calypso from the forward docking port on the ISS's Harmony module. Unique to this procedure, a breakout burn using 12 thruster firings quickly pushed the spacecraft away from the ISS. This maneuver took about 90 seconds, helping to minimize stress on the thrusters. Once free of the station, additional tests on Calypso's thrusters were carried out to collect valuable data for NASA and Boeing, aimed at solving the propulsion issues that have shadowed previous crewed returns. Calypso's deorbit burn was conducted over the Pacific Ocean at 11.17 p.m. EDT on September 6th, setting it on a trajectory for White Sands. Communication blackout occurred due to ionized air around the spacecraft during re-entry. Calypso flew over Baja, California and western Mexico before making its final approach to New Mexico. Upon nearing White Sands, the spacecraft jettisoned its forward heat shield and parachutes deployed in succession. Airbags inflated at about one kilometer above the ground, ensuring a soft nighttime touchdown. Following touchdown, the cargo was unloaded and preparations began to safely transport the spacecraft back to Boeing for future missions. Meanwhile, NASA and Boeing scientists scrutinized telemetry data to further understand the spacecraft's performance and refine future missions. The space community's eyes now turn to upcoming crew changes. Soyuz MS-26 will launch on September 11th, bringing a fresh team to the ISS and prompting a crew handover. This prompts the return of Soyuz MS-25 on September 24th. Additionally, the revised Crew-9 mission using Crew Dragon Freedom will begin, adding yet another layer to the complex staffing of the ISS. The future looks bright for the Starliner, which is anticipated to take on its first operational mission, Starliner 1, in February 2025. There are still some hurdles to clear, particularly with the spacecraft's propulsion system, but the ambition remains clear, to continue pushing the frontiers of what's possible in space travel. In other notable space news today, China's mysterious space plane has captured global attention once again, having just completed an impressive 268-day mission in orbit. This reusable spacecraft touched down at the Juquan Satellite Launch Center in northwest China on September 6th, marking yet another significant milestone in the realm of space exploration. Launched on December 14, 2023, atop a Long March 2F rocket, this was the space plane's third mission, yet much about its capabilities and objectives remains shrouded in secrecy. According to Chinese state media outlet Xinhua, the mission was a stepping stone towards developing more convenient and affordable round-trip methods for peaceful space utilization in the future. During its extended sojourn in orbit, the space plane reportedly performed various rendezvous and proximity operations, 
even releasing a small object into orbit, activities that could either serve satellite maintenance or pose potential implications for future orbital defense strategies. Astronomer Jonathan McDowell noted that this object was likely a sub-satellite deployment or a piece of hardware ejected before mission end, paralleling the spacecraft's first flight. As enigmatic as its purposes may be, the space plane's prolonged mission hasn't gone unnoticed. Its return only two days before the U.S. Space Force's own reusable vehicle, the X-37B, launched, adds another layer to the intrigue. The X-37B, like its Chinese counterpart, holds its mission details close to the chest, though it's known to be an experimental platform for new technologies. This endeavor underscores China's commitment to its space ambitions, positioning itself alongside other spacefaring nations like the U.S. and India, which is also working on a reusable orbital vehicle named Pushpack. As these countries push the boundaries of space travel, the technological advances and strategic capabilities they achieve could fundamentally alter the future of missions, both civilian and military, paving the way for an era where the cost and complexity of space missions are considerably reduced. When we hear the word aliens, various images might pop into our heads. Little green beings with big eyes, flying saucers, or perhaps epic battles in space. But this fascination with extraterrestrial life isn't just a modern phenomenon. It stretches back thousands of years and has evolved profoundly over time. Interestingly, the roots of this cosmic curiosity can be traced back to ancient civilizations. The Greek philosopher Epicurus and the Roman poet Lucretius both speculated about other worlds. Lucian of Samosata, writing in the 2nd century CE, took this a step further with a true story, a satire about inhabitants of the sun and moon fighting over Venus's colonization. Even the Catholic Church during the Middle Ages entertained the idea of extraterrestrial life, viewing it as another testament to God's omnipotence. Fast forward to 1686, when French author Bernard Le Bouvier de Fontenelle's Conversations on the Plurality of Worlds captivated audiences, contemplating the existence of other solar systems and the potential for other worlds teeming with life. This work ushered in a new era of scientific inquiry and imagination about the cosmos. By the 18th century, belief in extraterrestrial life became almost mainstream among the educated. This intellectual curiosity peaked with H.G. Wells' War of the Worlds in 1897, a novel that essentially mirrored the anxieties and fears of the British colonial era. The idea that Martians could invade Earth tapped into existential concerns and entertained readers simultaneously. In the 20th century, advancements in astronomy and space exploration rejuvenated interest in extraterrestrial life. From the space race to iconic movies like Close Encounters of the Third Kind and Invasion of the Body Snatchers, the topic of aliens became a fixture in popular culture. Who can forget the sensation caused by Orson Welles' 1938 radio broadcast of War of the Worlds, which supposedly incited panic among listeners who believed they were hearing real news of an extraterrestrial invasion. Today, the fascination has mounted exponentially with each scientific discovery and technological advancement. Films like Alien, Star Trek, 2001, A Space Odyssey, and TV shows such as The X-Files continue to capture our imagination. But beyond the silver screen, serious scientific endeavors like the search for exoplanets and the study of potential microbial life on Mars keep our eyes glued to telescopes and space missions. Robert Smith, a space historian at the University of Alberta, encapsulates this enduring fascination well. He argues that aliens serve as a mirror, reflecting our own fears, hopes, and curiosities about humanity. By studying how we conceptualize extraterrestrial life, we gain insight into our perspectives on existence, power, and what it means to be human. Yes, aliens have staked a permanent claim on our imaginations, conquering every form of media and igniting an enduring debate both in academia and around dinner tables. This relentless curiosity is perhaps best summarized by Arthur C. Clarke's famous quote, two possibilities exist. Either we are alone in the universe or we are not. Both are equally terrifying. So as we gaze at the stars and dream of life beyond Earth, let's appreciate how this quest both mirrors and molds our civilization. Whether through science, philosophy, or popular culture, the search for extraterrestrial life continues to challenge and inspire us, driving us to look deeper into the unknown and perhaps find a bit more about ourselves along the way. Next up, groundbreaking new technology. The universe is ever-changing, a grand cosmic dance occurring on a timeline vastly different from our own. 
Yet with every advancement in technology, we're bridging the gap and gaining a clearer picture of these celestial transformations. One groundbreaking tool set to revolutionize our understanding is NASA's upcoming Roman Space Telescope. Set to launch in 2027, the Nancy Grace Roman Space Telescope is named in honor of Nancy Grace Roman, often hailed as the mother of Hubble. This state-of-the-art telescope aims to uncover the secrets of galactic formation history and explore the mysterious substance known as dark matter. It's equipped with infrared sensors and a wide field of view that surpass its predecessors, making it uniquely capable of capturing the dynamic nature of the universe. A key component of the Roman Space Telescope's mission is the Ring Survey, short for Roman Infrared Nearby Galaxy Survey. This survey will focus on uncovering fossils of galaxy formation. Much like fossils on Earth help us understand ancient life, these stellar structures reveal the history and evolution of galaxies. These cosmic fossils include groups of ancient stars that hold clues to the galaxy's past, such as the merger events that shaped them and the chemistry of the galaxy at the time of their formation. Robin Sanderson, the deputy principal investigator of rings from the University of Pennsylvania, describes this process as piecing together an ancient puzzle. It's like going through an excavation, she says, and trying to sort out bones and put them back together. Roman's high-resolution imaging will make it possible to identify these galactic fossils, including long tidal tails and stellar streams, giving us a window into the galaxy's merger history. But the Roman Space Telescope's contributions don't stop there. It aims to probe one of the most enigmatic substances in the universe, dark matter. This elusive material makes up about 80% of the universe's mass, yet it's invisible and largely unobservable. By focusing on ultra-faint dwarf galaxies— which are almost entirely composed of dark matter with very little normal matter for star formation. Roman will help test various theories about the nature of this mysterious substance. Raja Guhathakurta from the University of California, Santa Cruz, points out that ultra-faint dwarf galaxies are like pure blobs of dark matter and can serve as excellent laboratories for study. By observing these galaxies in detail, Roman will provide invaluable data that brings us closer to understanding dark matter's true nature. Additionally, the Roman Space Telescope could expand the scope of our galactic studies. While the Milky Way and Andromeda are currently the only galactic halos we can study in detail, Roman's expansive field of view will allow astronomers to examine over a hundred fully resolved galactic halos. This leap in observational capability means more data, more insights, and ultimately, a more detailed understanding of galaxy formation and dark matter. With its high-resolution imaging and wide field of view, the Roman Space Telescope promises to fill in the gaps left by its predecessors. It will allow scientists to not only observe galaxies as dynamic, evolving entities, but also understand the intricate processes that govern their formation and evolution. When the Roman Space Telescope launches it's expected to fundamentally alter our understanding of the universe and our place within it. By studying galaxies similar in size and age to the Milky Way, Roman will offer new perspectives on how our own galaxy, and by extension, our own solar system and planet, came to be. So set your sights on 2027, when the Roman Space Telescope embarks on its mission to capture the universe in ways we've never seen before. It's not just about looking at the stars— it's about peering into the past to understand the future. The Roman Space Telescope will help us decode the grand story written across the cosmos, one galaxy at a time. That's all for this episode of Astronomy Daily. We took a journey through the upcoming annular solar eclipse on October 2nd, explored the Boeing Starliner Calypso's recent undocking and future crew rotations, and pondered the mysterious 268-day mission of China's space plane. We also examined our enduring fascination with aliens and looked forward to the groundbreaking research set to be conducted by NASA's Roman Space Telescope. I've been your host, Anna, and I hope you enjoyed this episode as much as I did. Be sure to visit our website at astronomydaily.io, where you can sign up for our free daily newsletter to stay updated on all things space and astronomy. You can also catch up on the latest news with our constantly updating news feed and listen to all our back episodes. Don't forget to follow us on social media. Just search for Astro Daily Pod on Facebook, X, YouTube, and TikTok. Until next time, keep looking up. <laughs>